And because I doubted that such men are questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged in these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept until I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself tomorrow. Thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice the great pomp, with great pomp, and was entered in the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city, at Festus' commandment, Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, you see this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also crying that he ought not to live any longer? But when I found that he was committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore, I have brought him forth to you, especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had I might have somewhat to write. For it seemed to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him, Chapter 26. I remember a little bit. If you want to. Sure. I didn't know if you had any voice. I want to try it. <clears throat> okay, if you can, I'll take you back. <clears throat> chapter 26 of the Acts of the Apostles. Then Agrippa okay. said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all things wherefore I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which is at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, knows all the Jews, which you knew me from the beginning, that they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand, and am judged for the hope of the promise made unto God our fathers, under which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you, that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I should ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Give me my keys. Which thing I also <laughs> did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them, even in two strange cities. Wherefore I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and then was to turn with me. And when we were fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Can you give me a water, Melvin? Can you give me a water? And, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister of a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and those things in which I will appear unto thee, deliver thee from the people and from Gentiles, for unto whom I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness, bless you, brother, mm -hmm. turn them from darkness unto light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and inheritance upon them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed them first unto Damascus and Jerusalem, and throughout the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first, and should rise from the dead, and should show life unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. 
For the king knoweth of these things, before of whom I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and all together such as I am, except for these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doth nothing worthy of death or of violence. Then said Agrippa and Ephesus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Woo! Chapter 27, the book of Acts. When it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's band. And when entering in the ship of Eredemium, we launched and many by sail to the coast of Asia, one Aristocarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into his friends and to refresh himself. When we were lost from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. When we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra in the city of Lycia. And then the sentry had found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce come over against the navy. We had suffered the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete, over against Salamone, and the hard passing it came into a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh went into the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading in the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken of by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious in to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix and be there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lie toward the southwest and towards the northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they still close by Crete. But not long after there arose a yet a tempestuous wind called Euryclapian. And when the ship was caught and they could not bear up the wind, they let her drive. After the running of a certain island, which was called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat. When they had undertaken it up, they used helps, undergirding the ship, and fearing lest it should fall to the quicksands, struck sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly, exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out the ship with our own hands and tackling of the ship. And when neither the sun nor the stars nor many days appeared, and no small tempest laid on us, all hope was that we should be saved and then taken away. But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not loose from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. But now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but only of the ship. There stood with me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and who I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be given as it was told. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. When the fourteenth night was come, we were driven up and down in Adria. About midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. And they sounded and found it twenty fathoms. When they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and they founded it fifteen fathoms. And fearing lest we should have fallen upon the rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under colors as though they had tossed anchors out of the foreship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. And the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat, and they let her fall off. And while the day was coming off, Paul besought them to all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day you have tarried, and you continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. When he had broken it, he began to eat. 
Then were they of good cheer, and they also took some meat. We were in all the ship two hundred, three score, and sixteen souls. When they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat unto the sea. And when it was day, they knew not knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, into which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. When they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast, and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken in the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept him from the purpose, and commanded they which should swim to get cast out first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on board, and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass, they escaped all to the land. Acts chapter 28 Then when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled the fire, and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. When Paul again gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and he felt no harm. I believe they looked on him when he should have swollen, or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions in the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us there three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick in fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the islands, came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors, and we departed and laded us with such things as were necessary. And after the three months we departed, and the ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in this isle, whose sign was cast here in Pollux, and landing in Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched the compass, and came to Regulum. After one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Pulio, to Oli. And we found brethren that were desired to tarry with him seven days, and so went towards Rome. And from this, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Apia, Forum, and to the three taverns. Who, when Paul saw, he thanked God, and he took courage. When we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldiers that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. When they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from the Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Who, when they examined me, they would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I ought to accuse my nation of, but of this cause, therefore, I have called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, Yet for this hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came and showed or spake any harm of thee, but we desired to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as thou concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging, who when he had found and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses, and out of the prophets from morning until evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. When they agreed not among themselves, they departed. But after the Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of the people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had a great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him. 
preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Woo! That is the end of Acts. It's my honor to start in the book of Romans, chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God, which I promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be a Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship and obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, upon whom are ye called Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of through the whole world. For my God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without seeking I make mention for you always in my prayers, making a request that by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and of me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, for it was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you, also even as other Gentiles. I am a debtor both of the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also unto the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, for it is that which would be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither the way they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. For for God also gave them up to their uncleanness, to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. They changed the truth of God into a lie, and they worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is best forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use that was against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one towards another. Men with men, worshiping that which was unseemly, received in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Even they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which is not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, all fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, comforted makers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Glory to be to God. Hallelujah. God bless the reading in His Word, chapter 2. Woo! Therefore, on thou that art an excusable <laughs> man. Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which committeth such things. And thinkest thou this, a man that judges them which do the same things, and does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? 
or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasure up unto thyself a wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds to them, who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey in righteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek, but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no respect of persons with God, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, and their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing, or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, behold, thou art a Jew, and resteth in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide to the blind, the light in them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge of the truth in the law. Thou, therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorst idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, break through breaking the law, dishonest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Hallelujah. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if there be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Amen. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Chapter 3. Amen. What advantage then hath the Jew, and what profit is there of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we slanderously reported, as we be slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. 
the poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their way, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, is to all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right. being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Where is thy boasting? Is it excluded? What of, by the what law of works? No. Nah. No. But by the faith, by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Right. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God no. forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Chapter 4. What shall we say then, Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Not to him that worketh is the reward, but reckoned of grace, but not of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of man unto whom works imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision only? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed upon them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he has been yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith be made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for there, where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be grace to the end the promise might be sure to all seed not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, have made thee a father of many nations. Therefore him, whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which are not as though they were, who might yeah. hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, 
but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he believed he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, but that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. Chapter 5. Amen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. And when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then. Big God justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? But not as the offense, but also is the free gift. For through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto the many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more... They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment come upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men of two justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the disobedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died into sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust therein. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. 
for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness, but God be thanked that ye were the servant of sin, that ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members' servants to the uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. But what free had ye then in those things thereof? Ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Chapter 7. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman that hath a husband is bound by law to her husband so long as he lives, but if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. For if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were yet in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by law, did work into our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive and without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was it then that which is good made death for me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me. By that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold into under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If I then do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth within me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not do that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more that I do that to it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, 
and bringing to me captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I serve myself the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Chapter 8. <coughs> therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was flesh through the flesh, it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do the mind the things of the flesh, but they that are of the, of the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So be that if the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. But in the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. But if we be suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of our creature awaiteth for the manifestation of the Son of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, but willingly, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together into now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom did he predestinate? Them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own Son, but delivereth him up from us all, how shall he not be with him freely to give all things? Who shall lay any charge to the charge of God's elect? Is it God that justifies? Who is he that condemneth? 
it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword? For it is written, For thy sake we are killed all day long, and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Chapter 9. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness to the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaining the adoption, the glory, the covenant, and the giving of the law, and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers of whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, but they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of compromise, or promise, that this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Not only this, but when Rebekah had also conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children not being yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. And it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hearten it? Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but... O oh, man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another to dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. As he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel through the number of the children of Israel. Be as to the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will be the Lord upon the earth. As Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we would have been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow God after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? 
because they sought it not by faith, but as if by works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone, for it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of the fix, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Chapter 10. Brethren, what? Whenever you're ready. Chapter 10. Go for it. Go for it. Don't be shy. Give me a try. Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine own heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Or, who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him should not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? except they be sent, as it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, Have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that ask not after me. But to Israel he said, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Romans chapter 11. I say then, Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite, the state of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wote he not what wote ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession for God against Israel, saying, Lord, 
they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars. I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men.